All right, so this video we'll be looking at cell size and why that is important in cellular structure and function. So a uh, living system have trillions of different cells. All the cells are really, really small, but there are differing sizes of cells. This picture kind of shows you that. It shows you that some cells are really small, some cells are a lot bigger. Uh, and the bottom is a kind of a logarithmic scale too, so it kind of can trick you if you're not familiar with that. But you can see, you know, some some are very, very big as far as uh, relatively able to see them like a frog egg, whereas we have some things that are very small, like animal and plant cells in general. And then the things that are inside them are very small, like mitochondria and so forth. Um, <clears throat> as cells get bigger, moving materials in and out of that cell becomes more and more difficult. I mean, if you can just think of a large room. Um, if you have a really large room and you're trying to put things in the middle of the room, the size of that room really dictates how difficult it is to move things in and out of that room, especially if you have to go all the way to the middle. You'd rather have lots of smaller rooms as opposed to one giant, giant room. And so cells get around this problem by dividing, uh, by staying small. And the way that we will talk about that in this class is we will say that cells need a sufficient surface area to volume ratio in order to move those materials because volume increases at a much greater rate than surface area does. Surface area, um, there's various equations depending on the type of depending on the type of um, shape that we're going to look at. And so a lot of times you'll see cubes used. Obviously, cells aren't cubes or cylinders or whatever shape is going to be. You'll see on the AP exam, but you will have those basic formulas, you know, like area is length times width. So that's a, that's a square function, right? Um, and so uh, surface area would be length times width times six if you're talking about a cube because there's six surfaces on a cube. Whereas volume is length times width times height. So that is a cubed function. And so volume is going to increase at a much greater rate than area does. And so you can see this in this one. Um, surface area is six. Volume, because it's one times one times six. Volume is one, one times one times one. So the surface area to volume ratio is six to one. Really big ratio. Multiply area times five, right? The sides times five, five times five, 25 times six, 150. But notice what happens to the volume. This is a factor of what, 25 difference here. And here is a factor of 125. It increased significantly more as the as the surface area increased the volume increases significantly more thus lowering the surface area to volume ratio cells want to maintain a high surface area to volume ratio the higher the surface area to volume ratio the more efficient the cell is you can see here i mean just imagine these two pieces were blocks of ice which one of these is going to cool your drink down quicker this giant block or these individual blocks. The individual blocks will because there's more water in contact with the ice than there is here. And so if you can imagine those being individual cells that are trying to move materials in and out of the cell, those cells are going to be much more efficient doing so because they're smaller and they have more contact with the outside world. So there are certain modifications that have been made uh, to create this surface area to volume ratio, not only at the cellular level, but also at more of a macroscopic level. Here you see um, plants um, produce something called root hairs. These increase the surface area, allow water and nutrients to flow in and out of the plant much more efficiently than they would have if this area of this plant was just simply smooth. Our own bodies have these modifications as well. In our bodies, we have the small intestines. Small intestines is about 12 to 20 feet of tubing and so which is pretty pretty impressive by itself but inside that tubing is little folds and you can see here in that pipe there's those folds well and if you look closer these folds provide more surface area and then if you look closer those folds have tiny little folds on them as well and if you look really close these tiny little folds have tiny little folds folds upon folds folds upon folds. And so this creates a whole lot of surface area for the primary function of the small intestines, which is nutrient absorption. We were able to absorb a lot more nutrients because we have a lot more surface area to volume ratio than we did if this was just simply a smooth pipe in our guts. This also um, is significant 
in heat exchange. A large organism is going to produce a lot more heat than a small organism, just simply by virtue of its volume. Every one of the cells inside that large organism have mitochondria. Every one of those mitochondria are producing heat, and the same in the mouse. And so the way that larger organisms get around this is by producing surface area. So this elephant has large ears. In general, a lar a large organisms also just have a slower metabolism. And so this also is able to counteract that. Whereas the mouse here is very small, has a lot higher surface area to volume ratio. And so it will attempt to stay warm by balling up this balling up creates a, a lower surface area to volume ratio, thus conserving heat, and mice tend to have a higher metabolism. And so this also increases their heat production, thus allowing them to stay warm. If mice had the metabolism of elephants, they would freeze to death almost immediately. And if mice, if elephants had the metabolism of mice, they would explode. And lastly, this idea of nutrient exchange. Um, Animal, animals and plants both have structures that allow for this. We mentioned the animal, the small intestine. A uh, great example of this with plants are stomata. This these little looks like little fish mouths on the uh, leaves, and these are little openings, which these openings provide more surface area with the surrounding environment. It allows CO2 to come in for photosynthesis, allows H2O and O2 to leave the cell, uh, which uh, the H2O leaving the cell pulls water up from the roots and allows water to flow completely through the plant using capillary action. And so the surface area um, to volume ratio, even on a macroscopic level, is very important for things like nutrient exchange and heat, uh, heat regulation.